Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for returning. Welcome back to Dominant Mets Nation. Although the Mets, they've been anything but dominant this year. I apologize about that. False advertisement. Hopefully they will be dominant in the near future. Now, um, and I just want to mention, I've been away for the last couple of weeks. Took a much needed vacation. Uh, me and my wife. First vacation in like seven years. But we are back in business, back to reporting on the Mets ASAP. Before I left, I said something substantial. I said something before the Dodgers series that the Mets had to go 10 and 5. They had to go 10 and 5 to have any semblance of chance of making it a season. And you know what? Since before the Dodgers series, the Mets have gone a putrid 5 and 6. Five and six, not even 500, not even 500. So my first game back yesterday night, watch, or two nights ago, watch the first game against the Yankees, opening day of the series, the Mets did great, 9-3, we won, looking good. So let me just tell you what we're going to get into this video. What we're going to do is we're going to recap the last two games, Yankees and the Mets, then I'm going to tell you about a conversation I had with a Marlins fan. And you know what? A lot of times, it's good to actually see what other fans think of the Mets. Realistically, they give you a have good conversation. And, you know, I, I just basically had to educate them about my perspective. They educated me about theirs. So I found that interesting. I'm going to save that for you. And... Of course, we are going to get into the trade landscape. What the Mets need to do and what I feel the Mets should already be doing right now. Uh, I was shocked in these last two weeks that it seems like there's really no plan. No plan. So we're going to get into that. But first, like I mentioned, let's get into this Yankees uh, series. Um, and if you could like, subscribe. If you like Mets contact, baseball contact. Please stick around. Please subscribe and like. Okay, so the Mets started off great. And just like the season is, they give you a slither of hope. Uh, Verlander was basically almost a Cy Young Award winner. Uh, performance, two hits allowed, struck out six. But basically looked like he controlled the game. Gave up no runs. So he gave us a great performance. Pete Alonso, masterful of performance, two home runs, five RBI. Vogel Park got into the business. Um, McNeil, the squirrel was looking good that game. It was beautiful. Lindor had three hits. So we opened it up against the Yankees beautifully. Beautifully. Even myself, who I know we have to sell. I'm like, wow, we're looking good. We're looking good. But I know we have to sell. Then... The next game happens, and the Mets lose 3-1. We make errors. We don't have timely hits. We have a putrid performance offensively, and it, we just show our true colors. When we're up, we will eventually be back down because this is not the team. We are built poorly. Built poorly. Okay? So no matter how high we get, we will be slammed back down to reality. So... I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get you go into this conversation because the last couple of games is really not worth talking about. It's been the same damn thing for the last two months. A poor performance after a poor performance. So let's not even get into that. It's not even worth it. It's really not because it's the same show over and over. So when I was in Florida. Um, I was talking about my Mets, and I was very upset, and um, I was actually talking to a real estate guy, and he's like, he's a Mets, uh, a Marlins fan, and he's like, isn't your team good? And I'm like, no, you haven't watched the Mets, they've been, they've been horrible. So I'm explaining like our predicament, our scenario, and he goes, but you guys got a lot of money, things can change easy, you got Pete Alonzo, you got all-stars, and I go, well, you know what, you're right, we do have a lot of money. But then I tell him my biggest problem with the Mets is I feel their leadership is terrible. I have no damn confidence in Billy Epler. So I start going into, okay, yeah, even if we do make trades and we do focus on next year, which we should, if we had a competent, competent GM, I would feel amazing. I would say this is the golden gift 
We have a team with so many players that we can trade off. But let me just give you, so far, the resume of Billy Epler, we acquired Trevor Gott this year, Darren Ruff last year, Michael Givens last year, and Tyler Naquin last year. We gave up a ton of prospects for nothing, for crap, for crap, right? So the conversation just went like, if we have no leadership, no matter how much money we have we can invest a billion dollars in this damn franchise and we will go nowhere we will go nowhere so you know talking to a Marlins fan who has not had much success it's really hard for them to like really realize like you know our goal my goal is a world series our goal Steve Cohen told us we are looking for a world series and I took the guy his word for it we are going for a world series that is my expectation that is our expectation to accomplish winning a World Series. Winning a World Series. Going down the Canyon of Heroes in New York City. Sitting there for the parade. Watching our New York Mets in that parade is my ultimate goal. That, that is something I, I've always been envious about. Seeing the Yankees win in the past. The Giants win recently. This is something I want for our New York Mets so, 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 so badly. Okay. So let's get into the re reality of the situation. So the Mets sit seven and a half games behind the last wild card spot right now. They are 57 and 44. You know, they have less than 60 games left. They would have to really pull off a damn miracle. And I'm not going to rely on that because even if they did pull up a miracle and made the playoff, that's not our goal. Our goal is to go far and win the World Series. So, um... Then therein lie, lies the problem. Now we have to rely on Billy Epler. And I'm, this is where I'm kind of frustrated with Steve Cohen. You're investing so much money, so much money, and you always talk about getting the best of the best talent in place. And I know it's been hard for you to find uh, a general manager, a president, but it just seems to me that there has to be somebody better than Billy Epler. If you like that Billy Epler, that is fine. If you want to put him second or third in charge, that is fine. But it is clear that putting Billy Epler as the man at the top in charge of these trades has not worked out. How much do you need to see? As I'm going to say, you are a man of action. You are a 17 times over billionaire. So I'm very disappointed that we have not made any moves in charge of leadership. Okay, so if we break down what, what, what needs to happen, there are about 10 players on this team that needs to go. There have been no trades of significance yet uh, besides getting rid of Eduardo Escobar. And that happened over a month ago. See, in that time frame, I was expecting trades to trickle in over time because I feel Billy Epler is not good under pressure. Under pressure, he has shown us when the deadline comes, he is not the best under pressure. So why are we going to make this guy operate so close to the deadline? It is bewildering me. I don't understand. If anybody can comment on that, why are we waiting towards the deadline? It seems like the market has pretty much developed. Teams, most of the teams have decided if they're going to sell or not. And even if they haven't officially declared it, they know internally if they are selling or not right now. There aren't many teams like the Mets that seem like they are in the middle of, are we still going to sell? Or are we going to, I can't even imagine thinking about buying. I can't even imagine that. Why in, why in, what in, what in, what in one universe would you think about buying right now? The team looks Horrendous on a daily ba basis. Horrendous. You ha you bring the kids up. Have the kids play. Mauricio should be here already. Um, anybody of talent, if you're thinking to evaluate, even if you want to bring guys up like Blade Tidwell, um, you know he's one of our good, young, promising pitchers. You bring him up. You should have all the young kids pitching in the second half of the year. Um, it's. I apologize about that. It's me holding my phone and the phone going off. Let me shut that off. But yeah, so this is who we're going to look at. And, and this is how many guys should at least be traded. So I have Tommy Pham, Mark Connor, David Robertson, Brooks Raley, Adam Adovino, Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, uh, Omen Davires, Daniel Volkoback, Carlos Carrasco, Jose Quintana. Uh, so that is 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys at minimum. Ten guys. And that's not even including guys if you want to include a guy like McNeil. If you if you somehow get a guy like Marte to go. Or uh, Gil Yarme, If you could f find takers for them. I, I got ten guys at minimum. At minimum. If you you know if you want to switch out other guys like Scherzer or uh, Verlander. If you don't want to trade them. Ten guys at minimum I have going on this team. You have these assets on the team that could be traded for prospects. For prospects, even if you can't get high-level prospects for some of these guys, have your scouts evaluate guys who might have potential. Might. This is where you get your money. This is where you earn your money as a scout. This is where you earn your money as a GM, as a front office executive. This is the time. Your, your uh, team has invested the most money in Major League Baseball history. Unbelievable. So, services of Tommy Pham. Who would want a bat like Tommy Pham? I don't know right now how many bats are out there, but a team like San Diego Padres who are undecided right now, if they decide to go for it, it seemed like that would be a perfect destination for Tommy Pham. Marcana as well. Marcana, he's a good major league bat, good good batting professional uh, hitter, uh, on-base guy. He's uh, He's got... I believe, yeah, he has an option. Tommy Pham doesn't have an option. So a team who doesn't want a commitment from next year, perfect player, Tommy Pham, get something for him. Marcana has an option for next year, but Steve Cohen could pay down most of the contract for this year. So essentially, it's not going to be that much. David Robertson, one of the best closers in baseball right now. You could get some top talent for him. Hopefully, you're not waiting to the last minute and you only have one suitors. I'm hoping that... Uh, Billy Epler and the rest of the front office has a plethora of options and they are making teams bid higher and higher. I hope that's the case. I hope it is. Brooks Raley, there are good arms in our bullpen. That's I was just looking at that. I was looking. We have David Robinson, Brooks Raley, Adam Adovino. If you want to trade a Drew Smith who's you know been decent, not great, but you have arms that you can deal, and bullpen arms are scarce, are scarce. You actually have talented guys out there. Brooks Raley, a lefty, is really scarce. Robinson, who's an effective closer, is really scarce. You make these guys bid just like a couple years ago with Chapman. You do the same thing. Chapman was an impending free agent. There's no difference out there. If there's a team out there who wants has World Series aspiration, they will be desperate. There aren't many guys like Robertson out there. Maybe two or three. There aren't many guys on the trading block. Okay, so those are your bullpen arms that you could trade. And then Jerston Verlander and Max Scherzer. Verlander is boosting his value. Teams like the Dodgers, teams like the Astros, they have been interested in the past on uh, um, in Verlander, especially the Astros. They will be interested in Verlander. They will be, especially if you eat some of the contract. Verlander has been pitching well. He's he's approaching a, um, a three earn run average. I think it's like 3.2. His ERA is being good. His whip is good. Uh, his strikeouts per nine is good. He's getting swing and misses. His, his um, advanced numbers are getting up there right now. Max Scherzer, I cannot say the same about. If you look at Max Scherzer's in, in, um, advanced numbers, they look scary. They look scary. He is not getting guys to swing and miss like he did last year. He is The hard hit ratio, guys are hitting him harder than he was last year. It has changed with Max Scherzer. I don't know if it's a sticky stuff situation. I don't know if he can't use the substances he was um, using last year. But his advanced numbers are different. They are hitting him harder. And he is not getting swing and misses like he did throughout his whole career. And even last year. Last year he was in the 90th percentile in, in a chase rate. Now he's like in the 50th percentile. Guys just aren't swinging at his pitches anymore. It is just... And it's just night and day with Scherzer. But if you can get a team who is desperate and there's not much starting pitching out there, you sh you send the guy off. You send the guy off. Omar Navarez, he's a, a a good serviceable lefty backup option as a catcher, uh, a backstop. That's a guy you could trade away. Even guys like Vogelback and Carrasco. Carrasco, you need depth on a team. This guy can eat up innings. Um, he's got a slider going, so he is a serv serviceable pitcher. Uh, Quintana, you know, you're probably gonna have to trade one of those two guys. You know, keep one. You need somebody to pitch. Um, Quintana is a guy who has a, a, a 
He signed for next year. He's a lefty. He's been shown in the last couple uh, games that, you know, he is a serviceable lefty. He's come back from an injury. So, I mean, there are guys right now that the Mets have to be busy. Uh, right now, it is the 27th of July. We have four or five more days for the Mets to trade. Literally, 10 players. 10 players. You literally have four or five days for the Mets to decide what they want to do. How they want to approach this thing. I've got no inclination right now. I don't trust them. I know people are probably saying, relax. They're going to sell. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. What indication has shown you that? What? Have, have they traded uh, some? I mean, besides Eduardo Escobar, which was over a month ago, and that could have been part of their buy process too. They could have been like, okay, we're going to dump him and start buying. It was so long ago, no decisions were made up over a month ago. Except that maybe they wanted to consistently start Brett Beatty. That's about the only decision that was made. Um, the, the the guy that they got, um, Trevor, Trevor uh, got. I mean, like Trevor garbage, garbage. Another guy to add in the garbage. And I know people are saying it's a salary dump. No, we were trying to acquire talent as well. We ended up failing there too. So my my bottom line is I have absolutely no confidence in. In Billy Eppler at all, um, I you know, and I'm I'm a bit disappointed in Steve Cohen, um, th and that's my summation right now. I have no confidence in Eppler. I'm a bit disappointed in Cohen, and um, and the Mets have a golden opportunity right now. They have chips. They have chips. I know you know you may think that they don't have value, but you know how many players in the past, if there's a team who's desperate, they give they give guys away, and you know they're not highly scouted in that franchise, but the Mets. They can determine that, hey, this guy has potential. And there have been hidden gems acquired at the trade that night so many times. Like uh, one of the Braves fans uh, uh, wrote me a, a message and they said John Smoltz was acquired in the late 80s. It was like a garbage trade and he was like a throw-on pitcher. You know, there's so many add-on prospects. Um, and I remember even when Noah Syndergaard was good, he was an add-on prospect. There's so many times that if you do your scouting and development, you can find these hidden gems. And if you have all these chips, you have more opportunity to find these hidden gems. So that's what I got for you today. That is my analysis. This is my reaction video coming back from a, a two-week vacation and uh we are back in the grind we are back in the trade deadline and i am waiting i am waiting for us to make a move i am waiting to break that down and to see how we go i you know i, I really want to see how we make our first move i want to see if we get ripped off i want to see i, I just want to see how how the whole thing works then I, i'll have a little more confidence i'll have a little more confidence on the mess next moves but right now i have zero confidence Zero confidence. That's just me. Um, you know, I know I got to be a little more positive. I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to work on that. But, you know, I I've been a Met fan. I mean, you know, it's it's been hard to be confident. So thank you so much for watching. Really, I, I re thank you. Thank you. If you made it this far, I, I really appreciate you. I really do. Please like and subscribe. Um, you, know, I you know, Met fans are all the greatest fans. I really do. I, I believe that. I've been from state to state i've stopped in uh, other states i've spoken to other fans nobody's as knowledgeable as new york met fans um and as passion i mean whew, met fans are the most passionate fans i love going to city field uh when the mets are good shea stadium back in the day when the mets you know the 2000 1999 run i mean it, the, shea was rocking you know, I, I can't wait to see that again. I, I, I really can't. I really can't. I, I was hoping that we would see that this year, but we have to give up this year in order to be good for the next couple of years. Look at it like that. So, all right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Thank you. Let's go Mets. Can't get any worse, but it seems like that is the case. It has been getting worse. Later.